Hey everybody, it's Melinda from Paper Wishes by Melinda. I am coming to you tonight from a storm outside. I've never shot a video in a storm, so if the tornado sirens go off, it's okay. The paper cave is in the basement. If you hear my family running crazy behind, the sirens are probably going off. But hey, I need to get this video done. It is running late because having a new grandson is really kind of fun and baby crew needed a babysitter last weekend so oh, bummer I volunteered so um my favorite pumpkin alternatives are running late but they are done and I will warn you they're running late because I was so addicted to this kit the video um that I'm going to shoot right now is mostly about the paper pumpkin um alternatives for the beyond the horizon march kit uh, for my Paper Pumpkin Perks Club members, your um, extra supplies, goodies, and treats will be headed out in the mail along with your um, instructions to make some fun alternative cards. If you are not in my Paper Pumpkin Perks Club, think about subscribing to Paper Pumpkin um, through my website, paperwishesbymelinda.com, because my Paper Pumpkin Perks Club features fun. Not only do you get the awesome and amazing Paper Pumpkin from Stamping Up, when you're in my Perks Club with a subscription to Paper Pumpkin through me, you get a few more supplies and a treat or two and some instructions to make some more alternative cards and fun. I also feature full color pictures of all of the, with um, some basic instructions for all of the um, alternative projects, and I send them oh, four or five more cards that they get to make with some supplies, treats, and usually a surprise gift in there. So it's really a lot of fun. I think the value of Paper Pumpkin is out of this world. You can get so many cards and projects out of these fun little boxes. This card, I believe, was supposed to make nine kit cards, and I probably have maybe 30. I do get two Paper Pumpkin um, kits so that I can create one with you and um, just create one for my samples ahead of time. However, I had so much fun. I actually had to break into the second kit to get a few more things out because I just kept coming up with ideas. Think outside of the box. These are fun. The value is amazing. You need to send it by the 10th of every month to get the paper pumpkin for that month. Now we are currently signing up for the, um, May paper pumpkin kit and it features the new in colors so you are not going to want to miss it would you like a sneak peek of the new in colors because I've got them and they are right here aren't they gorgeous yes I have been playing a little bit and I will have to say I love them I'm going to do a video and offer some color clubs in just um, that'll be the next video I shoot and it will be yet this week I promise but we'll give you a quick little thing this is Orchard Oasis um, oh gosh I know them and I look at them this is Parakeet Party um, Titian Tide sorbet um sweet sorbet oh this one is so pretty and we have the starry sky these are all just gorgeous colors i have been creating a little bit um here's the card stock in the colors parakeet party um starry sky orchard oasis sweet sorbet and tiny tishan tide these are so pretty. I, you are going to want these in colors. Every two years, Stampin' Up! comes out with in colors that they um, create with, and they're new and fun. They are not in our regular color line, and these are the new 22, 2022 to 2024 in colors. They're amazing. I love them. As a demo, I get to pre-order them early. That is a huge, huge perk. We get to pre-order a lot of the um, new stamp sets, new bundles, new colors, new ink, Oh, ribbon, it goes on and on. It is so much fun. If you're not a demo and you love Stampin' Up! and you love the products as much as I do, seriously, consider joining the fun. You will love being a demonstrator. There are so many amazing perks to it. I make cards. I make cards all the time. I can't imagine not being a demo. Even if I was not a demo um, that is involved in the, in the business side of Stampin' Up!, I would still be a demonstrator for my personal paper crafting hobbies as I love to stamp. I love the Stampin' Up! products. They are excellent quality. They all coordinate, as you can tell, together. The stickers, or not the stickers, the ink, the stamps, 
the stamp sets coordinate with the dies. I love coordination. If you know me, I'm a very matchy person. My kids laugh because when they were little, I just dust them all the same every day. They all had the same color family on. And I didn't even realize I was doing it. The daycare would point out to me, do you know your kids are all dressed in red, white, and blue or green and yellow or whatever the color for the day was? And I'd be like, oh, I have to match. I didn't realize when they were little that they all matched every day. That is me. I love to match. So I love Stamping Up for that reason, um, that everything coordinates. Everything is beautiful. The quality is excellent. I love being a demonstrator. And I really, really encourage you for $99. It is a great investment. Even if you do nothing more than buy the starter kit, I can't imagine that you wouldn't. $99 is a pair of shoes. I love shoes too. So that's another whole story. But anyway, think about being a demonstrator. This is a great time to join. We have got graduation coming up. How many people need tons of graduation cards? We've already got invites flying in upstairs. Wedding season is upon us. All those events that you need cards for. We do not buy a card in this house. I make them all. Even my kids are like, mom, I need a card. I love it. Um, and I do create for some boutiques and I offer online classes too. So there's lots of different things that you can do with Stamping Up. Um, I'm also a huge scrapbooker, so I use it for my cardstock. Um, just lots and lots of reasons to be a demonstrator. You'll find your own, but I encourage you to give it a try. If you're interested, please email me with any questions that you have. I would love to have you join my Paper Wishes team. I really love to have fun with my demos. I love to spoil them just a little bit or maybe a lot. Um, think about it. Join the fun. I want to keep this rolling because I have got a ton of cards to show you. I wanted also to give you a sneak peek of the new catalog. It's so fun. This catalog is amazing. Sometimes I get a new catalog from Stampin' Up! and while I love it, I'm just like, oh, I got to think about these sets. I seriously want them all. This catalog is jam-packed. So if you don't have a demonstrator or you don't have a new catalog, um, I will gladly get you one. My catalog customers on my mailing selector should be getting those any day now in the mail because they have been um, ordered from Stamping Up and shipped in this mailing selector. I will be following up with some wish lists and some things like that for those of you that already are getting catalogs from me. If you'd like a catalog, just let me know. I will be happy to get you one. There's also going to be some coupons and some other little fun things coming with the catalog. So if you want some coupons for the In Color Club or a catalog, please let me know, comment below, or email me at melinda at paperwishesbymelinda.com, and I will be happy to assist you. I forgot to show you the cute, and I'll be making this in the um, color video, but look at this cute little sweet songbird set, and I featured him in all the new in colors. Are these not, isn't he just adorable? I wasn't going to get him, and this is a bundle, so it's a stamp set and a punch, super super cute in all the new in colors and the new in color 6x6 six six dsp is also featured on there i wasn't gonna get the little songbird but he just flew right in my cart too because he's so cute so i'm gonna show you how to make those um in the in color bundle um video that i will release here shortly um i wanted to i'm gonna flip the calen calendar the phone and show you some cards that i have been making because when i say that i make cards and create cards for all my events. I'm going to show you just a hint of the family cards that I needed last week. And I think um, if you guys think about it, you're probably doing, sending, buying that many cards yourselves. Um, that's the value of Stamping Up. I don't have to run to the store. I always have cards on hand. I like to mass produce when I have time, or sometimes I just like to create one and unique. I love to coordinate my cards to their wedding invites or to the wrapping paper on the gift. Yeah, there's that matchy side coming out of me again. Yes, I'm a little nuts. Not everyone is quite like me. I do realize that um, that's probably a good thing. But I have fun, and I really, really want you guys to join the fun. Um, we can have a lot of fun together. Stamping up is a blast. Paper wishes is a lot of fun. The paper wishes room behind me needs to be cleaned, but I keep stamping, so it'll be there. Um, oh well, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, this is my happy place. I have a sign back there that actually says that. This is my happy place, and it really is. I can have a really crappy day in the transportation world, and I can come home, and everybody knows mom is happy when she's downstairs in her paper cave. Um, one more little sneak peek I want to show you. Are you ready? Because this one is super cute. This is the cup of tea bundle. Um, stamp set, die cuts, and designer series paper, six by six, all double-sided. Oh, this is beautiful in those new in colors. Are you ready for the card? Because it is so cute. I had a friend who was hurt this week, and I wanted to send her a card. And so this one was just perfect. Take care of yourself. Isn't that sweet? This is just a little sneak peek 
of some of the new stuff coming your way because we can sneak peek it. We can't actually show you inside the catalog or anything else, but I can sneak peek this card to you. Um, so isn't it fun? Take care of yourself. Here's the um, inside. I just added some DSP on the bottom. And of course, gotta have the envelope flaps matching. Super cute. This stuff is going to be fun. I'm telling you, this is going to be a great set. So that is one of the cards that I made. Like I said, I just want to show you guys that I do stamp a lot. I do stamp for my family. So I am going to show you just a little bit of a variety of the cards that I needed this week, just for life events. Then I'm going to debut the paper pumpkin um, for this month because this one was really amazing. Um, can't wait. The um, April one has shipped. So that features some fun projects. I will feature an alternative video and projects for that one as soon as I get time to create. Um, should be a little quieter this month. We'll hope we're caught up at work. So I should be down here a lot more. In my day work job, I am in the transportation world running a trucking company. So yep, kind of a difference. Trucking versus stamping. This is my creative side. Uh, just a little side fact about me. So I'm going to flip the camera. I'm sorry, I don't have fancy music and all that fun stuff on my video because... I just don't have time. It's not that I wouldn't love to. I just don't have time because I'd rather be creating than sharing with you. So sorry, it is what it is. This is what you get right now. Maybe one of these days I'll learn all that fun stuff too, but I'm doing good to get these videos shot. So here we go. We're going to flip you down and all right. I know you have a good view of my work surface. This is my website, paperwishesbymelinda.com. If you want to find me, I post projects and videos on there. I also have a private Facebook group. Um, I have a public page, paperwishesbymelinda.com, and I have a private group for all my customers and those that really want to just share some fun. So feel free to friend me and join that if you'd like to. This is, oh, first I was going to share my cards just for the week. This is the Pirates and Mermaids set because we had a two-year-old with a birthday, our great niece. And I thought this was just fun in the pool party. Um, you are so mer mesmer mermazing. And um, it's your birthday. This is some of the party paper pack. This one is no longer, but I love this. We have a new one in the new Kellogg that is awesome. So there's a two-year-old birthday. Then our niece turned 15 and you know teenagers gotta have a fun card this is for the record i've been dying to play with this set and it was so much fun so we had a 15 year old birthday in our house to in our family this week and it says you're awesome happy birthday um use some of the glitter organdy ribbon i die cut the circles out um i did use the abstract beauty paper pack just four by six new paper um, and this is what I'm working out of it oh my gosh I have gone through a couple packs of this already I absolutely I love this size the new size four by six I love the colors the the um, foil um, embossing in the paper metallic it's it's absolutely beautiful paper to create with so that's the for the record this is in our spring and summer mini catalog if you need one of those I'd be happy to get you a catalog in that too um then I created uh, Thinking of You for a dear neighbor that passed away. And this one, I used some of the um, Beyond the Horizon 6x6 DSP. I don't have that in front of me. And I used the On the Horizon stamp set and some of the um, embellished rocks. A little stitch rectangle, Thinking of You. Um, I did use a subtle embossing folder, which we're going to use in a card here in a little bit. I love the texture. They lived on the lake, so I thought this was just perfect for him. I wrapped it in some of the um, Baker's Twine. And uh, this is from Here's to a Card. I put some grass inside. I also put some of the grass on the envelope. Once again, just I love Happy Mail. The envelope always has to somehow be pretty, too. But for a masculine card, I thought this was a good look. Then, like I said, this is a great stamp set. It has a dimensional dot on it. There are also some die cuts that are fun to use with this. So this was also fun to use with the Beyond the Horizon um, paper pumpkin kit. So Beyond the Horizon, great stamp set. There is a die set, coordinating die set with it, and I don't know where he is right now. Um, and then I had, we had a dear sweet friend, um, family friend we've known for years that lost her battle with cancer 
and I just needed, we're really good friends with the family, so I needed one for the family and also a good friend of my husband's was also a sister to them. So we needed a card that just was beautiful and I I just fell in love with this. The idea behind this card, this is using the um, um, hand-penned stamp set and, or Quiet Meadow, sorry, this is Quiet Meadow with the hand-penned paper. Um, and I'm going to make this for you. But what I wanted to point out about this card is just the design. Because you can use this design with any um, probably long stamp. But just changing the, the wording, if you get down some simple design elements, it's very easy to create. So I did add some soft succulent um, ribbon. But thinking of you, sympathy cards really need to just be kind of simple and beautiful. And also, um, they're helpful if they're flat to mail. So that's why I love our organdy ribbons. They tie beautifully and this will mail easily and the post office won't be upset that it's a grumpy. And sometimes I put like a, a cardboard or something over the top to mail it. Um, this one will be fine just as is. And then I also stamped the design inside and heartfelt love and caring thoughts are with you. Um, and then once again, I didn't want to do the flowery paper on the back of the envelope. So I just added the stamps down in the corner. So I'm just going to craft this one quick for you. I haven't checked lately. The hand penned DSP is, um, on discontinuance because the new catalog came out. So if it is still available online, it's probably 920, which is an awesome buy. Be sure to check out the specials on the discontinued merchandise as it is moving out so that May 1st, when the new catalog launches, you will get to see the new products. Um, and there are some good ones coming your way. So this is just a basic gray card and it is cut four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half with our trimmer. Um, we are going to go ahead and did I not mount my stamps? <laughs> Guess what? I didn't mount my stamps. It's okay. It won't take me long. I'll grab them out. Sorry, I the best laid plans don't always go as planned. And now everything flew on the floor to add to my fun. Look at that. If you saw my workspace, it's just kind of chaotic. Okay, so um, this is a bundle too, and this is the stamp set. And obviously, I only have punched out the ones that I'm using, and there is the die cuts. And I normally keep a magnet in here to keep them all in order, but I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. So there are coordinating die cuts that match with the stamp set, as you can see. So that is what is called a bundle. Now, I am going to use my basic gray ink and I thought I had everything laid out and obviously I didn't for this card, but that's okay. We got it. Bear with me for a second before we get to the paper pumpkin, which is really the purpose of this video, but I just wanted to show you quick and I'm probably not going to do the whole card. Um, but what I wanted to show you is my sizes and I got to grab a block. Oh goodness, we have a really big block, but it's okay. It'll work. All right, so I use some basic white, and we're going to go ahead and put together, I guess we can go ahead and do the inside first. I'm going to go ahead, and I just want to lightly ink this flower up for the inside of the envelope, because I don't, I don't really want it real dark. And sometimes I stamp it off, um, which actually I'm going to. And then I'm just going to kind of angle it and I want it over to the left a little bit. Perfect. And then I would put my verse in here and I don't have that mounted and to keep this moving. I'm not going to do that. And I have a little four inch by half inch strip of the DSP because I like to bring that to the inside of the card like so. So then I would just stamp my verse right in here. Um, next I have a piece of basic white and it is cut to two and a quarter by four and a half. And we are going to go ahead and stamp our flower set on this, like so. Give it good firming, perfect. 
and we are going to set this out of the way so it doesn't get inky and then I have my basic gray mat that I am going to um, put and this is oh this is two inch two inch by four and a half this is two and a quarter no this is oh my goodness this is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. This is two inch by four and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my stamp and seal plus, and we're gonna mount this right down on our basic gray. And then I use my stamping blends a lot, but for this one, I want to use my markers. This is the um, Blushing Bride. And I just kind of went in, and I'm not gonna color this 100%. But I went in and I colored all the flowers with the markers. I like to use the stamp and blends, but there are also times when I want to use the markers. In this instance, I needed this color, which does not come in a stamping blend. So I needed to use my markers. Our markers do come in all of our color families. So um, I do use those a lot too. And they also have a fine tip and a brush stroke tip. I am using the brush stroke tip and I'm just kind of coloring in and then this is kind of a fast version. All the flowers, like so. And then I did use our soft succulent and I did use my stamp and blend here and I'm going to use the fine tip part. And I'm just going to go ahead and go over all of the leaves. I love the soft, just pale green color. We do have a Stampin' Lifter, which I might need to use to correct a couple places because I'm trying to hurry, so I'm kind of going out of my lines a little bit. I'm sure you don't want to watch me color all night. It's very relaxing though. I love our Stampin' Blends because they don't leave lines, they just blend. So there's a difference between those and the markers. This is going to need a little cleanup with the corrector, color lifter. All right, so I also have a piece of the hand pen DSP and it is cut four by five and a quarter. There's all of our designer series paper is two-sided, so there's another fun side. I'm going to mount this right on the front of my card, like so. Then um, I have some stitched rectangles and I have a gray one and my white one just went flying and landed on the floor. Awesome. All right. I'm running out of blocks because I've got so much mounted over here on my side. All right. And this is the thinking of you. And one good way to um, mount your stamp straight is to use some grid paper and lie it, lay it so it's straight on a line and then drop your block on it. I don't have my labels on my blocks. Um, I don't like to put them on there, but some people do. This is, says thinking of you, and this is a stitched rectangle die cut. Same thing with the die cut. I am, or the, yes, the cutout basic white. I'm just gonna make sure that it's flat and straight on the line. And I got a little ink up there. That's okay. We will take that off with the eraser later. See my little ink blob? It's not that noticeable, but it's gonna bug me. So um, we did not stick this inside our card. Once again, I always stick basic white because it's kind of hard to write on a dark gray. So I like to put some basic white um, inside my card. So I would just stamp my verse in there. Then I am going to pop this up with some stamping dimensionals. Which I have a whole pile of right beside me. I love dimensionals. I love dimension on cards. So I tend to get way carried away with those. You can, um, sometimes it seems like never have enough sympathy cards on hand and they're kind of something that you need when you need them. Um, so it's always fun, not fun, but always good to have some stamped ahead of time. I love to use my paper um, piercing tool or my take your pick tool to pop the backs off the glue dots. It works really well. So I'm just going to stick this to the left side of the card like so. Then I am going to use my um, uh, gray rectangle 
and I'm going to do this a little different. I laid it there because I know where I want to lay it and I'm going to use Stamped Seal on one side of it and then we're going to use a glue dot, not a glue dot, a dimensional on the other side. So I just kind of laid that out like so. Then I'm going to tuck the dimensional on the back side of it so that it's popped up. Then let's see if we can use our mono eraser and get that little hint of gray. I rocked my block and that's what happened. If not, I'll just cut another one later. Sometimes you can save things because that's going to drive me crazy. It's looking better. Still in there, but it's looking better. We'll, we'll work on it more later. And then I'm just going to use my stamp and seal. And I'm just going to angle this. Oh, that is going to bug me. We'll get it later. And um, not angle it, but I'm going to layer it. So it's just kind of stacked and shifted off the side. Isn't that just a simple, simple card? Then I used my soft succulent ribbon and I just tied a bow and I adhered it with a mini glue dot right on the side. Not necessary, but I love that the soft succulent ribbon just coordinates with the stems and I thought it just pulled it all together. Then I did the same thing with the um, envelope and I just caught the top edge and I put it on the front side of the envelope and stamped it that way. I did use some Stampin' Blends and I don't even remember what color I grabbed, but I grabbed a yellow for the insides of the flowers too. So um, just a simple card, but that's just a few of the cards that I have made and sent out just this last week. Um, as you can tell, I'm always making cards. Life's events require cards. People need to know that, that they're being thought of these days. Um, so I definitely, preach the choir or actually walk the walk of what I do. All right, let's get on to what the reason this video is really about right now. And that is our paper pumpkin. I'm going to open the box. It comes every month um, in your mail, just like this. And I'm going to flip through my alternative projects and then we're going to make a few really quick. Um, and if we have time and this video isn't completely out of control, I have a little treat holder that I want to share with you too. I love the paper pumpkin boxes because not only does all your stuff come mailed in this kit, which is wrapped beautifully in tissue paper and all of the above, it's great for storing your projects when you get them done. So I can go to a paper pumpkin box and know what card I'm looking for. If I'm looking for birthday cards or um, Christmas cards or whatever, I store my projects. Um, they also make great wrapping boxes when like it's Christmas and you're looking for boxes. But anyway, this is the Beyond the Horizon. As you can see, I have made a ton, a ton of cards. Um, and we're going to flip through them really fast. This is just Misty Moonlight, some of the ribbon from the pack of um, uh, just a basic card. This is the envelopes. And I will show you what all came in the kit in a little bit. This is using some of the Beyond the Horizon DSP, one of our um, punches, and the rest is from the kit, with the exception of I did use a lot of the On the Horizon, so the birds are from the On the Horizon. Um, always, 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 when you're cutting apart your envelopes, I'll show you how to do that in a minute, save the strips, because it's really fun to coordinate the inside of the envelopes. Send that one into a sympathy. Um, I use the subtle embossing folder a lot for the texture on these cards and some of the fun um, embellished rocks that we have. Um, the linen or the baker's twine was super fun. Linen thread, um, linen thread, I guess is what I used here, um, was really fun with this project. So I used a lot of linen thread. So there's another one. Then you got an extra bonus because it was our paper pumpkin anniversary. So we got a second stamp set, which was really, really fun to create with. Um, this is a, um, the scalped contour labels below, which I use a ton of. And I actually fussy cut out the stamps. The flowers are fussy cut with just with scissors and the leaves and popped up with dimensionals. Um, added some Wink of Stella. I don't know if you can see the part sparkle in that card. Um, also added a little flower and some leaves inside. Best wishes. So that was fun. That was an envelope. Then who doesn't love Easter? And guess what? It's like almost here. So there's one of the envelopes with the skip um, scalp contour and the cute little duckling added some of the gems out of the kit. Happy Easter. Celebrate. 
super fun. This one was a fun one. I've um, featured this card quite a bit, but it is a lot of fun. This is Pear Pizzazz with another bunny out of the kit, holding some little flowers with the bow punch and the brass butterflies. Oh, how I love those. So this is a five and a half by four and a quarter scored in the middle. And then you just um, cut off the front of it at two and three quarters. Um, so that's literally half of the card front with your trimmer. And then obviously this would be two and a half by four. And this is one of the envelopes and it's stamped. The bunny is stamped in um, soft suede. So super fun. Happy Easter. That is using the um, sweet bunny set. I'll get that one out in a minute here. There's um, just some of the leftover envelope strips when I got all done. A little note. That's one of the dies out of the kit. The mountains are out of the kit. The ribbon is out of the kit. Just a simple fun card. Then I was having way too much fun. Look at the little ladybugs. Just um, some vellum and using the Ladybug Builder Punch. I just made some fun envelopes. The scalloped label again. Some of the embellishments out of the kit. I love. I actually um, split one of the um, rectangles out of the kit in half. There's one of the envelopes opened up. Um, sending you birthday wishes. All the stamp sets are... Um, I didn't really use much for different words because this these sets were so full of great words. Celebrate. This could be a perfect shower, wedding card. This is um, Old Olive and it features the um, envelope in some crumb cake and the bow punch again. I love using our bow punch. Um, Baker's Twine and some of the metallic gems, brushed metallic gems. I love, love, love those. Best wishes. Perfect for a wedding. Um birthday, you name it. Um, thinking of you, these cards really did not have to be um, really decked out either because subtle is just also pretty. Um, they just didn't require a lot and sometimes less is more too. Brush metallic gems. This is one of the card fronts cut down to um, three and three fourths by five and then peekaboo peach underneath it. I'm on the video. Did you need something? Oh, okay. All right. No, you're fine. Handsome Hutter. Um, so simple card, linen thread wrapped around it. Another one is, uh, this is, I love this one. These are all out of the kit and it's thanks. I just tucked a little bow underneath it. Uh, super fun. All of these die cuts are in the kit. You can make them wispy or you can use the glue and use, um, stick them down. I had a fun with that one. Here is another fun one. These are all out of the kit. I cut down the card front to three and a quarter, or this is five by three and a quarter. And then my uh, peach one. Why can I not think of the name of that? Oh gosh, it is just like at my fingertips. Is um, four by five and a quarter, Misty Moonlight. Everything is kind of layered here, and these are all out of the kit. There's some of the inside envelopes. So use those strips. Thinking of you, this is one of the die cuts out of the kit. More of the brushed gems. Um, a linen bow. I like to double thread those. Um, this is the bumblebee with the misty moonlight. One of the card bases cut down. Strip inside. Here is another one featuring the... Um, this is the old olive. And this is an envelope. And I just stamped off. So it's lighter for the background and then stamped right in the ink for the outline. Um, and we will, I will show you, but it, one great way to do that is to um, do the opposite. Stamp your outlines first and then go over the top of it with your um, background stamp. And that way you can line up your lines. It works like a charm. I will always be there for you. Um, I wrapped with linen thread. Um, this is popped up with dimensionals. Super cute card. A little note, um, more just layering. I use some of the copperish gems. This one is popped up with dimensionals. A lot of my standard um, layouts are four by five and a quarter for the mat, and then three and three fourths by five. I just love this card. I love all of them, actually. Like I said, I really had fun. I will always be here for you. I did use the Handsome Hunter, not Handsome Hunter. Oh, goodness. Why am I just sprained it on the new colors tonight? I used the in color dark green. Um, okay, well, um, 
Evening Evergreen. Wow. Sorry about that. Okay. Thinking of you, I used um, more of our um, dark green, which is the Old Olive. No, that is not Old Olive. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It is Mossy Meadow. Oh, sorry. Wow. This is what happens when you're trying to hurry and then you get interrupted by your husband bringing down UPS packages. Sorry about that. And these are all out of the kit. Um, see how I did? I just popped some of these with mini glue dots. So see how they're kind of wispy? That's kind of fun. Double twied bow. I did use that um, punch again. The um, tag punch. Ticket punch. I don't know. Um, so that's out of the kit. This is a fun one. This is actually just ripped. I just literally used my fingers and I ripped around the card front. Um, on the on the horizon, there is a die cut set with the fence and I just used some soft suede ink. I um, cut it out in crumb cake and then I just um, used a sponge and I inked it up with some soft suede ink, added some rocks, uh, wrapped it in some of the all-star base baker's twine. Um, it's on the basic gray and it is popped up with dimensionals time to celebrate i i love this one these little gems were so fun to use in the cards the rocks um pear pizzazz was super fun to use here this is just a fun one too that envelope um down at the bottom is used for the bottom i did not use let any of them go to waste added some of the gems out of the kit i loved the um leaf uh stamp this is done in pear pizzazz misty moonlight um there's just use the i love to decorate the inside so i just use the stamp and then sending birthday wishes here's another fun one that is the also wrapped in the um fan baker's twine pack and it is a pack of three that is new in the mini kellogg so we have some red and white some um of the evening evergreen and some of the misty moonlight use all out of the kit. Um, I will always be here for you. I just split the ribbon, pop this up with dimensionals. This is all out of the kit too. I just, isn't the colors just gorgeous? There's the mountain, all of these die cuts, the texture, all in the, the um, kit. I did pop the top layer of this one off with dimensionals. So the um, bottom layer, the four by five and a quarter is mounted right on to the evening evergreen. And then the next mat which is the three and three quarters by five is popped up with dimensionals i added some of the grass out of the on your horizon with the evening evergreen and here is another fun one and you know what i'm still missing a couple cards this is just thanks i love it just fun just these all were just fun fun cards to make i know fun i use it way too much um i am going to there's the other baker's twine fan I'm going to show you, I would love to show you how the kit really comes, but I've already used too much of this to do that because like I said, normally I break into them and I, I, I unveil it all on one of the boxes, but I actually got out this one and created. So you're going to get kind of a mismatch here, but all your kits come with a stamp set. Um, this one was a bonus because remember it was our anniversary. So we actually got two. So I've mounted both of the stamp sets on whites you can see what they are and these were fun this is the one that came in the on the horizon thanks hello i will always be thinking of you i will always um be here for you thinking of you congratulations a little note i mean this was just awesome 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 stamps then we got celebrate um best wishes sending your birthday wishes time to celebrate and the floral floral flowers and leaves these are just so versatile when you're especially beginning stamper verses are huge and always needed so these were really really fun to um these will be basics to use all the time great way to start your collection of stamping with paper pumpkin kits too also in the kits not only do you get a stamp set you obviously get envelopes and i want to show you a little trick with all the envelopes there were die cuts really fun die cuts in the kit and i recommend just punching everything out and kind of having a pile so that you can start going through it ribbon the peekaboo peach ribbon um card bases, more die cuts, um, full color instructions, mini glue dots. The full color instructions are great um, and the products are awesome as is. Like I said, think outside of the box, have fun with these. 
um, just create, have a paper pumpkin party, order a couple kits and just have your friends over to create. You can create the cards as is and they are gorgeous. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. Or you can just think outside of the box and have fun. I love to challenge myself every month. So that is why I make the alternatives and I love to share them with all of you. So I hope that you enjoy them. We're going to make a few in just a second. Um, but I wanted to show you, there is some alternative projects on the back. You can use these even in your scrapbooking or other paper crafting. You don't have to be a card maker to get the value out of paper pumpkin. It also came with some Stampin' Dimensionals, some embellishment gems, which are really fun to use, an ink spot. This month it was Misty Moonlight. You always get an ink spot. So it's a great way to start and add to your ink collection. So super fun kit. Lots and lots of pieces inside. Um, and we are going to create. The very first thing I recommend that you do is to take some of your envelopes and just cut them open. Why do I do that, you say? Because look, there's more paper inside. Look at the designer series paper inside. So you get way more bang for your buck. And I just take my trimmer and I slice as close to the edge as I can off the sides of the envelope, like so. And it's good at heavy quality, so it makes great cardstock. So then I go ahead and I take my trimmer and I just find the folded edge and I just slice right down on all of them. So look at that. Instead of, whoops, I missed that one just a little bit. So now instead of nine envelope, nine cards, I already have, um, let's see, nine times. Well, 18, but I have more than 18 because I, I used all of these. I die cut out things. I punched out shapes. I used every bit of these strips for the inside of envelopes. I don't throw anything away. By the time I get done with Paper Pumpkin, honestly, there might be a few um, small things left in the box and that's pretty much it. So take it, sit down, slice up your envelopes. You can add basic white envelopes to the kits um, and then it'll just there's where that value comes in. You can create so much more just by taking your envelopes and slicing them apart. Here's one more alternative. I was looking for him and he flew away. This is a fun one. Yes, it's kind of putsy and it took quite a while to create. Mother's Day is coming up um, or a, a birthday card for um, actually our future daughter-in-law's birthday is Friday night. So this might actually be her card. I did a little bit of a fun thing with this. This is actually... Um, scored at two and a half and I believe it is, I think my directions fell apart, uh, three and a half. So actually it's scored at two and a half and then this was at seven and a half. So when you fold it, you have your standard card in the center. I turned this into a gift card holder so I can still write on my four by five and a quarter inch base. And I'm going to tuck, I don't have a gift card in front of me, but I'm going to tuck a gift card right down in there or some cash. I haven't really decided. Um, so I just use my tearing tape and I put some on the insides and sealed it up. It could just flip open and, but I made it into a gift card holder. Um, so that was just fun. And I used pieces of the envelopes for all of the um, paper. And when you're trying to figure out measurements, as long as you have your basic um, sizes, which obviously is four and a quarter by three and a half. So this would be four by three and a quarter. Go down a quarter of an inch to get, get that basic mat. I stamped the flowers and I fussy cut them out. These are actually the die kits in the kit. They're just turned over so they're white. Misty moonlight leaves. Tucked, um, all of it is really pieces out of the kit. Wrapped it in um, the linen thread and tied a bow. Um, I did stamp Misty Moonlight. I just, just a super fun card and I love that I made it into a gift card holder. So this would be perfect for Mother's Day anything like that. It's still pretty flat, so it'd be easily mailable. So like I, like I said, just have fun. Fussy cutting is when we use our little paper snips and we literally just trim out with scissors. The key to the fussy cutting is to keep turning your paper, not your scissors, and kind of just leave a little bit of a white edge around them. So super fun to fussy cut. That was a fun card too. I am using fun way too much, but I do have fun with the paper pumpkin cuts. They are just a lot of Sorry, fun to create with. So I'm gonna show you just a couple quick um, more cards and alternative projects that I made. This one is Thinking of You, and this kind of goes off of the um, other card that I did with the bunny. And so we're gonna show you, 
but I do need to cut up an envelope because I didn't cut up a green one. So let's quick get him. If I can find him. Oh goodness. Oh, duh, they're right in front of me here. Here we go. All right. So once again, you get, I should have, not a good idea to have all your stuff underneath. All right. This is an old olive card and I'm going to just, I want to get this leafy print on the inside of this one. So I'm just going to snip the sides off of this one. Like I said, that's how we get all of our card front. It just, it's so fun because then you have so much more designer series paper. I don't know if Stampin' Up! really thought of that when they created Paper Pumpkin, but for those of us who love Paper Pumpkin, it works like a charm. Now, um, this one, I want, let's go ahead. I already have done this into a four and a quarter by 11 and scored up five and a half. When I say scored, we have two blades on our trimmer, so I always use the scoring blade to create that crease. Then I um, fold it on the scored line and use my bone folder to, and mine fell in ink, to get a good crisp um, crease in your card. Now, I want to take this because I want to get that second little piece. So I'm going to take one side of it and I'm going to cut it off with my trimmer at two and three quarters. So now I have that piece to flip. So I also already have a basic white four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mount that. This is new. I don't normally create on my trimmer, but I guess I'm going to need it for a minute. So that's why I'm just doing it this way, kind of backwards. So I'm going to just stamp, or stick that down with my stamping seal. So that's a um, five and a quarter by four. And then I need to get some of my DSP for both sides. So I want this to be a two and a half. Yeah, by four. I had to think for a minute on that. And that is going to go right here on this card front. And then I need to get another one. And I'm going to find my, of course, I have to cut up one more envelope. Um, sorry, I should have had these done ahead of time. I used everything in the last kit. So, but like I said, just take your envelopes and slice them ahead of time. If you want to have extra DSP, you do not have to at all. But it is fun to add to it. So we're just going to go ahead and use this one. And I want it to be two and a half by. And I'm going to take a little bit of each end off because that's kind of the envelope end. So I'm just kind of, you can use it, but I'm going to cut it down here a little bit. All right, there we go. Now we're going to do four. All right. So we'll set this out of the way for a minute because I have everything else cut out. So um, we're just going to stick these down with the stamp and seal like so. There's that. And then there's the side that I cut off and we're going to use the planer um, DSP from the, a different envelope in the kit. And we're going to put that right there. And then I cut out a label out of the Hippo Happiness die cuts. And I'm going to use my old olive ink and the thinking of you. And that is not thinking of you. And it doesn't have to be any of them. It could be, um, well, it might not be. Anything. Oh, here we go. All right. I'm going to use the thinking of you. And I'm also going to use our ivy leaves. And I just kind of angled my leaves like so and I met the stems in the center and oh I just had the thinking of you seriously how do these things disappear oh goodness it is mounted and it is ready to go and it probably would bite me if it could it has got to be right in front of me. What in the heck? Oh, goodness sakes. That is not it. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Using Old Olive Ink. This one is already mounted, and it says, Thinking of You. 
With your first subscription to Paper Pumpkin, you also get a block if you do not have any of our acrylic blocks. You get a more thin block, but it works just as well. I do encourage you, and this one needs to be cleaned, to um, invest in the blocks over time. It's a great investment in your stamping. I love our Paula Premier stamps, which are the ones the Paper Pumpkin uses. And shoot, I was talking and I did not get that quite the way I wanted, but it's okay. Sometimes you can also take a marker and you want to grab the right color first. Let's see if I can find it here quick. Always artichoke. That is not the one I want. Oh, goodness. Okay, well, we will fix that later. But what I would do is I would mount this with my, and I will do that part. We're just not going to put that label in. Normally it has two sides, but the stitch side of this one I want to keep up. So I'm going to just die cut that later. And what happened was I just didn't press evenly because I was talking a little too much. Imagine that me talk too much. So now I'm just going to use my stamping seal plus. I like to use a plus. It's just a little bit firmer and I like to use not firmer, but a little bit uh, stiffer. Uh, it's very non-forgiving, it, so it's just a really firm adhesive, and I really like to use that one a lot. Stamping Seal is also great. We also have lots of different options in um, our stamping products. So normally I would layer that right here, and then I already double-tied a um, linen thread bow. When I mean double-tied, I just take two strands, and I put them right together, and I tie the bow. And I would take a mini glue dot. And I would just stick this right down like so. Then I used my take your pick tool and I um, peeled up some of the brushed metallic um, gems. These are one that's well used as you can tell. And I just popped those up and I put a couple of them right in the corner of the um, leg. And I did pop the label up with dimensionals as you can see. So mini glue dot to hold down the bow. Um, take your pick tool, place the gems, dimensionals to pop it up. And then I put, I will always be here for you inside of it. I love that saying. And I also used another strip of the envelope and this is a four inch by half inch. And I just cut that right down in the side. So on this card, I'm going to restamp the label after the video. And then I am just going to add, I will always be here for you. So another fun card just by taking a four and a quarter by 11, score at five and a half, and then just cut down your piece to two and three quarters. And you could make the card go this way. You can make it go this way. It's just a fun, fun cut. Because once I said, once you get your design elements, it's really easy to create lots of different angles. So that is a fun one. One lesson, don't ever leave your ink open. That is not a good idea. But anyway, um, here is another alternative that I had fun making. And I'm just going to try to whip through these quickly. This one, I pretty much did a lot of the work ahead of time. I cut this down to three and three quarters by five. A little tip when you're cutting down the sides is don't do it all off of one side or your design is not going to be proportioned. See how I have a little bit of the white edge around all the sides? I um, cut down a little off of each side so that my design... Um, focal point is centered with the white edge. Then I emboss this with our subtle embossing folder and I use this a lot. I love this one. So when I mean emboss, I run it through our stamp, um, our cut emboss machine and I literally just make a sandwich with my piece of um, paper I want inside and you roll it through and it comes out with some very fun texture. You want your Stampin' Up! to be on the top, but I don't know if you can see the texture in that. I just, I love how that one turned out. So that is our subtle embossing folder. I am going to adhere that right now to, no I'm not, I'm going to do this different. We're going to, as long as I have this cut, we're going to do the inside first and this is once again, a four by five and a quarter, um, basic white. And I love to put them inside my cards so that I can write without having a dark inside base. I just think it makes them look richer, gives them some weight. And I stamped in Misty Moonlight, which is right here. And I need to quick clean this because this one I already used. So, oh goodness, the background is getting a little messy here. We're going to stamp thinking of you inside of this one 
in the Misty Moonlight. And I did it again. Why am I not? Sometimes you can line them up and restamp. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but whew, that one is all right. It worked. That will work. All right. Good enough for the coat, I know. Ha ha. I am going to clean that off right away. And then I also have one of the little labels out of the kit right here. And while we have our ink out, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp that and see if I can actually get um, an even stamp out tonight because I don't know what my problem is, except for I'm trying to hurry. Um, I will always be here for you. I have them all mounted, so I'm sitting here sorting through the blocks. Probably not the best laid plan, but I know they're here. Here we go. All right, let's make sure this one is clean. This one says, I will always be here for you. And this is one of the labels that is out of the kit. And this does have two sides. So if you goof up on one side, you can just flip it. And once again, you want to be sure that you're straight. Line it up on grid paper. All right. Awesome. I don't like that. It seems a little crooked. So you know what? Oh, goodness. We can get a little straighter here. Actually, though, white on white is hard for me to see. So I'm going to jump down here. And that's a little better. Kind of low, but no one's going to really know about me. All right. So. Oh, shoot. Now I'm Seriously, this just fell on the floor. Sorry about this. Probably going to fall off my chair trying to reach it. All right. So I am going to build my card front for a minute before I do more with this. And these are really intricate. And there's lots of different ways that you can adhere them down. But I don't, I'm just going to use my multi-purpose glue because I just want to just do a really scant edge of it. So see how I'm just dusting it. You can use a sponge, um, lots of different ways that you can do it, but I just try to pick a, a couple of the wider places. It's not going to go anywhere. You just want to have a tiny bit of glue um, and it will stick right down. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up in the right hand corner of my card, kind of as a sun, I think you could say. And I'm going to pop the um, stamped um, label up and we're going to use this side of it. One's a little crooked, one's a little high. I don't know. I guess you can take your pick tonight. Ha ha. All right. And I'm going to pop this up right over the sun like so. Um, then we used, oh yep, I punched it out. I knew I did. All right. These also were some just fun shapes with some great colors that were in the kit. So these are die cuts that came in the kit and um, they're kind of little. So I am just going to throw some glue on the back of these too and stick them down. Our glue is nice because it's, it's forgiving for a quick minute before it adheres. So you can kind of position it around a little and it does not take much. It's very sticky. So less is more. So there are those. And I'm going to put down this one first. This is kind of a coral. I'm just going to put it right about there and stick it down. Then I'm going to take the green. And I want this one to be just a little shorter. And I should have snipped this before, but I'm just going to snip off about a good quarter of an inch, I guess. And I'm going to put that one right on top of this one like so so it's layered then um i think i don't know if these are cattails i don't really know my nature very well sorry guys i'd rather be inside stamping um and i'm gonna once again like i said you could use the mini glue dots in the kit i just like to kind of touch the tips with a little bit of glue it's not gonna go anywhere um so i'm just really lightly dusting some glue on here you can see that a little bit so it's not gonna all right and we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna put this kind of towards the bottom of the card like so and press it down then I am going to 
I love to wrap things, if you watch my videos at all, three times. It's just kind of my magic number. And I'm going to kind of wrap it right about here. One, two, and three. And I want it to be tight, so just kind of play with it until you get it tight. We're going to use our paper snips. We're going to snip it off. I go through tons of those too. I love our linen thread. Highly recommend it. It's just awesome. And I thought the nature look of it just looked perfect with this kit. So I'm just going to knot it off like so. Snip it up. I always like to trim my edges. Not necessary, but I just like them trimmed. Um, if you wanted to get it tighter and you didn't get it tight enough, you can cheat and put a mini glue dot and pinch it in on the back. But that is just fine. Then these little embellished rocks are so much fun. Um, they're just perfect for these nature cards. So we are going to place a couple of them. And there's really no design reason either way with rocks because they're rocks. So just kind of place them around your card. I used a couple of the different colors and just kind of place them around on the card like so. Then I mounted this on a piece of four by five and a quarter inch crumb cake. And you want to just kind of lightly press, and I could have put it right on the crumb cake and then stuck it down. Sometimes I do that just so you don't um, wear down the emboss. But I'm going to go ahead and mount that right on my four by five and a quarter inch crumb cake, like so. Oops, he's a little crooked too. Carefully. All right, straighten it up. Then I am going to use my dimensionals. And I'm going to pop this one up off the card. I use a lot of dimensionals too. It probably is a really good thing I'm a demonstrator because I go through those like water. I love dimensionals. Um, it's just fun to add dimension. It's fun to add embellishments to cards. Not necessary whatsoever. Um, just an element that I like to add to them. I like to add layers of three. So I like um, like twine embellishment and a pop-up maybe is my rule of three. I didn't, I don't think I scored this very well with my bone folder. So once again, see how that card wanted to flop up? I just pressed it, scored it a little, or um, creased it a little bit better with my bone folder. I don't think I did that. And I'm going to pop this right on the front. So super fun card. I love the, the elements, the nature. I, I had fun with this one. Once again, that's a subtle embossing folder. There's card number one. Card number two, I do have this one um, cut out for you. And I used another of the um, envelopes for this one too. This is some of the Pear Pizzazz Misty Moonlight. Um, and this is a four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. Four by five and a quarter, whisper white inside. I did um, take a little strip, a four inch strip by about a half inch. These are all just little extra pieces that came out of my kit. Um, and I am going to go ahead and grab the inside of the card right now. So there's that. And sometimes if you go over your edge just a little bit, you can just take your paper snips and snip it off. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick that right inside of our card. So it's already done, like so. Then I took the envelope inside, is cut to three and a half by four and three quarters. See, there's one of the envelopes. Um, then I took our layering circles and I just die cut out an inside. Then I took the next layer up and I die cut out just a scrap paper of the misty moonlight. Um, so we're going to mount that on a piece of pear pizzazz first. So this one is three and a quarter by four and three fourths. Um, this is three and three fourths by five. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick this down like so. All right, then we are going to, um, I want the, the 
fun side of this, fun side, the printed side, to show up more. So I'm going to stick that like so. And that looks good. It's going to be as good as it is. All right, then I'm going to take some dimensionals. And those are my minis. I don't want minis. And I'm going to pop the circle up off the cutout circle. Okay, so we're going to do that like this. And then I'm going to use my bow punch, which is out for this card. Where, oh, here we go. All right. And I have some scraps. I like to, I have one already punched out. So there's one. And then I got some yellow to bring out the yellow and the card was fun. So I punched one of the flower stems. I like to punch upside down so I can literally see what I'm punching. So there's one of the yellow flowers. It doesn't always work to punch upside down, but that's a little trick that works really well. And then I have a scrap of the blue because I want to get a blue flower out of here. Misty Moonlight. Misty Moonlight is one of the in colors that's retiring and it really makes me sad because it is one of my favorites. But that's okay. The new in colors look fabulous. Now I want to also get one of the leaves. This bow punch is amazing. I use it all the time. So if you want a great basic punch, the bow punch is awesome. It does come in a bundle with another stamp set, or you can just get the um, stamp set by, or the punch by itself. And now we're just going to do some fun layering, just some fun layering. And that is where you just lay out and play. So I'm going to have to use my mini glue dots here, or mini dimensionals, because I pop that up a little bit more than I did on the last one. So I need some dimension here. And I don't want to do every leaf because I just kind of want it to be really wispy. So this one is going to go about here, like so. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to angle the other one in a different way. So I'm using my just my little glue dot, or my mini dimensionals. And I want to make sure that you can't see them from the front. And... We're going to go ahead and put him, I want him to be a little bit lower, so maybe right about there. And sometimes you just have to use your fingernail and bend those under. I got that a little close to the edge. All right, so I am going to take a little mini glue dot and, oh my, where did those float off to? They were just right here. Hmm. Well, this is bizarre. I think things, I think you turn on the camera and my crap supplies just run and hide. Maybe they have a little bit of stage fright. I'm not really sure. Here we go. We'll use some that came out of the kit. I don't use these as often, but you can just flip the top off and you have a sticky dimensional. And I just wanted to get, I'm going to have to use another one because I want that stem to be stuck down too. And, uh, oh. I tend to use the ones that come in the roll more than I use the ones out of the kit. Um, they just are a little bit easier to craft with, but, and that is now stuck to my finger and not where I want it to be. That is so bizarre because my dimensionals were just right here a second ago. The minute I turn off the camera, they'll be like, here I am. All right, there we go. See, I, that stem was floating a little bit too much. Then I want to do angle our flowers and we're going to go ahead and kind of just tuck one up in here. Can not decide how I want it to stick it down since nothing's cooperating tonight. There we go. That one actually worked. Like so. And I want a misty moonlight flower. There are blue flowers, but there are on this card, right? Just kind of makes it look like a bouquet. Then I have a scrap of basic white paper here. And I want to stamp thinking of you in the misty moonlight. And I want to step it right along the straight edge and then I'm going to fussy cut it out. Because I can actually get my tea to come out in this one. The heck 
You know what? I am determined and I already used that side. That's okay. We'll use this one. Why? What is going on here? I don't know if I have a glitch in my... Okay, this is really annoying me. We are going to... I've used that so much, maybe I wore it out. Haha. Huh? I'm going to try this one more time because I am determined to get that tea to come out. I don't know what is going on here. There we go. Looks good there. All right. Okay, looks perfect. That is more like I like it. Now, I'm going to just take my scissors and I'm just going to kind of curve in and cut around this thing. Like so. And I want it to be pretty close to my words, so I'm just going to snip off the edges. That's just kind of fussy cutting out my words. A little bit different, but kind of fun to do once in a while. And I'm going to pop this up with some dimensionals. My ink was a little bit wet. So be careful to let your ink dry before you do that. All right. And we're going to pop that. No, I'm not actually. I forgot to put my bow on. I'm going to do a pretty um, long linen thread because I want some tail. So I just snipped off a pretty good piece and I'm going to tie a bow that has some good tails on it. Good tails. Isn't that just a good word? I don't know if that's really what you'd proper grammar, but I want some long tails. I guess if you have short tails or bad tails, I don't know. Okay, and I want to kind of use that to hold my bouquet together because we just made a fun little bouquet. So we're going to kind of use a, a mini glue dot right in the center of that. And I cannot believe my mini glue dots are not where they're supposed to be. This is really driving me crazy. So I'm going to grab another box. I don't know why they're not right beside me where they always stay. Anyway. I like to work off the roll, and this is how they come. So I'm going to take a mini glue dot. Sometimes I work them with my fingers a little bit, and I'm going to put that right down in the center of my bouquet, and I'm going to go ahead and stick my linen twine bow down. Then I'm going to take our greeting that we did with the dimensionals, and I'm going to put it right over the tails, kind of centering on the circle. And then we'll go ahead and trim up our edges. I do want it to kind of spiral up the card, but you don't want it to be terribly long. And I always like to make sure that they're not the same length, just for some fun dimension. So now that we have this done, I am going to use more dimensionals because I love dimension. And we're going to pop this off the card. Not necessary. It would be perfectly fine to put down with the um, stamp and seal, but I, like I said, I love to add dimension to cards. So dimensionals are really, really fun. And I'm literally going to pop those off. This also helps to keep them from flying all over your house because you can just go whew, and put them right in the garbage. Then you don't have them everywhere because they do tend to go everywhere. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this right down on my card front. But you know what? Before I do that, I think we're going to add just something fun. I love this little design texture. And I'm going to stick some right down in the corner of that card, just for a little bit of fun. And I should have got it a little closer to the edge. But you know what, since we did that, we're gonna go ahead and do one up in this corner too, like so. Just to add a little bit of element to the background, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick this down. And you really can't see it. I should have got it a little bit closer, but you can see enough, a little bit of it. So there you go. I should have got that out farther. There's a fun one thinking of you. I love the dimension in that card and it looks silly. I should have really got that out. So forget that idea when you make them. Sometimes I wing it on the camera and that probably wasn't the best wing I could have done. Super fun card just using the die cut circles, the layering circles. And I have one last card. Hopefully I can kind of power through it quickly. This one was a super, super fun card to make. Um, and it uses 
the um, Crushed Curry ink. We'll see if we can do this one on live camera. This one I cut to a five and a half by eight and a half and scored it at four and a quarter. Crease it with my bone folder like so. Then I have a white that is five inch by three and three quarters. And the um, Mossy Meadow is cut to five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. When you want a really narrow mat, just go one eighth out instead of a quarter of an inch. So that is how I did that. I'm going to go ahead and do the inside first. And this one for the inside, I did sending birthday wishes. I also stamped, I need to clean this one off quick. These are stamping chamois, which are awesome for cl cleaning our Paula Premier. And yes, they get really nasty. They just keep moist. I keep them in an old um, case. Um, you can wash it every so often, but that's normal. I stamp a lot. That's what they're going to look like. So I cleaned that up. I do need to clean my blocks later. And I'm going to use some crushed curry. And if you want to make sure they're clean, you can kind of stamp in the corner, but that looks good. And I'm going to use some crushed curry. And this is a five and a quarter by four. Um, I forgot to mention that when you cut your cards apart, all those cards that come in the kit, you will have a ton of the mats because um, all of the back sides of all the card bases are white. So use those for the insides of your cards. All you have to do is cut them down to the size you need. And I already mounted this, sending you birthday wishes like so. I got that a little dark. Actually, sometimes it's a good idea to stamp off. By stamping off, what I mean is we're going to go like that. Then we're going to stamp. Yeah, I like that much better. Just a little bit lighter. So when they say stamp off, it's stamp on your paper, stamp on some scrap paper, and then stamp. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then I want to re-stamp my greeting over the top of that. And that is not the one you don't want to put thinking of you and celebrate together. That would be kind of bad. Wait, oh, here we go. All right, sending birthday wishes. I'm in a couple birthday clubs, so I am always sending birthday cards. So that is done. I'm going to set that aside for just a few minutes here. We are going to work on the front of this card, and I am going to stamp the flowers first. And remember how I said to stamp opposite of how you'd think. We're going to stamp the um, accents first on the florals, flowers, and I want them to kind of angle right up in here. So before I get ready to stamp, I just kind of vision where I'm going to put this. So I am going to grab my stamps. And I'm going to ink this one up really good because this is my darker color. And I want this one to land right up in here. So there we go. Give it some firm press. I sometimes um, stamp on a foam mat, which is recommended. I tend to just stamp more on my countertop, but you can also do that. Okay, so see how I have that darker image. Now I'm going to take my solid stamp set, and a lot of people do this one first. I love to do the background the accent first and then you can see to line this up right over the top it works like a charm now I am gonna stamp off because I want this one to be lighter so I'm gonna ink it up good but then I'm gonna stamp it off first so now we're gonna come back over it and I'm gonna line it up you can kind of line your edges up and I'm gonna stamp so I use the same color ink, I use crushed curry, but now I have the lighter and the darker just by stamping off. So that's how we did that. Next, we're going to add some leaves and we're going to do that in the same exact way. I'm going to use some old olive ink and I have lots of different sizes of um inks. You know what? I'm going to grab the center of this flower first though. Like so. Oops. I rocked that a little bit. It didn't quite come out. That's a little dark. But um, I did take some 
I don't want that one to be too dark. I did take some of the soft suede and I did the flower insides like so. You could do it in black. I like the soft suede for just a little bit more of a subtle look. So there's that. And then we're going to just add some leaves. And let me find all my leaves that are mounted beside me here. There's one, there's one. There's a bigger one. There should be, a, this little one just keeps flying off his block. He is not being a very good boy. Okay, so we've got our old olive and there's really no right or wrong. We're just gonna stamp some leaves in there wherever they land. So there's one. Um, I wanna tuck another one kind of up in here like so. Let's tuck a bigger one coming out over here. And then I want to, I'm going to stamp off. So I stamped one. Now I want a lighter one in there. And let's add one more darker one coming out over in here. It looks pretty good. I like that. Okay. So we put our leaves aside and then I added the celebrate and I did stamp that in the misty moonlight. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that right up in here like so. This is pretty, super fun, super fun. Now see how I want to add some, just some more color to that because it just, it needs to have that naturistic look. So another fun thing you can do with the markers is you can just splatter. And there's a couple different ways that you can splatter. I like to do it this way. I like to just take my marker and my lid and just flick some ink spots. See how I'm just getting a little bit of ink on that? Make sure if you're doing this, you do it on a scrap pad so that you have some. Isn't that fun? I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. And since the inside, I want it to match, I'm just gonna splatter a little bit on here too. Isn't that fun? You can also use your scissor and you can just tap it um, and get ink around it. So either way works really good. We're going to go ahead and stick this inside of our card real quick. Well, I've got it right here. So there's the inside of my card. And this is just once again, a five and a quarter by four. So there's that done. And I could have stamped flowers inside it. I don't know. I just kind of like that for some different texture. I am going to take the linen thread and I am going to break my rule instead of two on, or three. I'm only going to do two on the bottom of my card. So there's that. And we're going to go ahead and I do want it to be a little tighter on this one. So here we go. All right. Have I lost you yet? Hopefully we're almost done. I promise. Tight in a knot, knot it off. All right, trim up your ends. Then we are going to go ahead and I'm going to stick this right on the hair possess. No, this is old olive for hair possess. They're so close. Sometimes I have to stop and think, especially when I'm in a hurry. I tend to rattle off colors. If you have any questions, just email me or comment on the video. I'll be happy to help you or answer them. And I'm going to mount that just like so. And then we are going to, you got it, add dimensionals to pop it off the card front because dimension is just fun. And this is also a great card to mail. It's easily mailable. I know I don't need this many, but I like to add dimension. Pop these off. And here we go. Now this is fun, but I still think it needs one more thing. Don't you guys? The brass butterflies are one of my absolute favorite things in this spring mini catalog. I, I love these. I add them just about anywhere that you can. So we are just going to, excuse my package, 
um, I'm just going to reach in there and grab some and I'm just going to place them around the card because I think these are so much fun. I'm just going to tuck them around. I have one flying down to my flower. Awesome. How is that for fun? Isn't that just cute? Whoops. I might have to tuck him under a little bit. Um, and you can play with your twine. Celebrate. Sending you birthday wishes. I love this card. Just super fun. Hope you guys enjoy it too. It was a lot of fun. I missed one of the backs of my dimensionals. It's not sticking down. I missed two. That's what happens when you're talking and hurrying. There we go. That's super fun. Now I'm going to throw one last little Easter treat at you. Because remember how I said I like to send treats? This is a fun little treat. Um holder that I made for Easter and it is super fun to make. I used our treat bags that we have in the Stamping Up um, catalog. If they're still available, they are on the discontinued list. They are ombre treat bags, but I absolutely love them because our family is all about treats. So I took one and I scored it on the back side at about five and a quarter, five and a half, I think is where I scored it. And I just score it because I want a fold line. So I scored a couple times so that I have a good fold line to um, fold over. And I want to go the other way. So I want to go like that. So there is that. Then I used one of my layering circles and one of our heart and home doilies. These are so fun to use. And remember that fun Easter slot I was talking about? Easter friends. This is so cute for baby cards. It's not just for Easter spring cards, but I literally stamped the little chick in some soft suede ink. A good way to do it is just upside down too. When you do stamps, you can just um, go ahead and stick it down like so. So I'm just gonna stick him on my layered circle. You can stamp it and then cut it, or you can, yeah. wow, I am batting a thousand. I missed this little foot. Oh, goodness sakes, what is going on here? Well, shoot. Um, well, anyway, we stamped it on that. Then I am going to color it in with my Stampin' Blends, and I used some of the dark saffron and the um, light so saffron and I use pumpkin pie for his little feet and beak and I colored in the chick then we I tuck it full of treats and I cut out a banner so I have a little banner. I did use our Timeless Tools um, set and I um, stamped the um, saying, which is happy Easter, happy spring, happy everything. I stamped that in basic gray ink. Then I used our tag, double tag um, punch and I cut the ends off like so. And I like to do that upside down too, so you can kind of see your ends and I use the wrong end. Wow, this video is just amazing. I'm sure you're going, whoa, this lady needs help. Okay, so there's that. I have one end done. We'll grab our basic gray. And we are going to stamp. Like so. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just snip that off, and I want to get my end. Oops, I want to get that a little bit closer to my thing, and I'm just trying to get it proportional. There we go, that looks good. So now I would take that and I would place this right over my poor duck that is missing a foot. So I will re-stamp him. And then I use some of our um, loose flowers. Oh, I love these things. And I just used mini glue dots and I stuck 
two of them in the color of the coordinating bag because there's several different colors that they come in and they all happen to be colors of the loose flowers. So I stuck them right down with mini glue dots on my label that is just adhered over the um, duckling. I did pop the circle up with dimensionals and then I laid that on the doily. I just took my stamping seal and I just did the top edge of the doily behind the duckling and stuck it on the bag. Um, before I, and then I did tuck a Baker's Twine um, basic white bow underneath it. And then another fun thing that I like to do is I like to take my um, mini rhinestones and stick those carefully. This is kind of fun inside of the larger flowers and it takes just a little bit of coordination to get him to stay in there isn't that just fun just adds a little bling to your flower so these will be filled with some little easter treats and sent off to my nieces and nephews um so i'm just filling them with some goodies i will just use a little bit of adhesive to um kind of just fasten it down and there is just a fun little Easter treat bag. This little um, check set is just a fun one to use. So um, I love to create treats to go with fun things too. So that is just a cute little treat bag. I hope you all enjoyed every the videos and the alternative projects. I love paper pumpkin. I really, I love to paper craft. I love paper pumpkin um, a lot. I think the value in them is absolutely huge. So consider them. Oh my, this video got really long. I apologize guys. I get so windy. I will sign off on this. Remember if I can help with anything or if you want a new catalog, be sure to tune in for the in colors. Thank you for watching. Have a great night. Have a great week. Whew, we didn't get blown away in the storm. So that is a good thing. Thanks a lot. Have a great week.